All of us may be getting used to the idea that true privacy is a thing of the past. Every day another caught on camera moment creates headlines. Every time we post a selfie, search the web, or buy a product online, we sacrifice some personal space for the convenience or connection. ABC's David Wright examines the consequences. For Queen B and Jay-Z, the invasion of privacy is the price of fame. This sort of attention on the red carpet feeds their brand. But in the elevator moments earlier, an argument in which Beyonce's sister appears to physically attack Jay-Z. The release of the elevator security cam footage is clearly a violation. Technology for surveillance is so cheap and powerful that anyone can basically be in the surveillance business. The danger isn't just the big brother Edward Snowden warned us about. It's millions of little brothers keeping a watchful eye on the digital footprints we leave without even realizing it. Every website we visit, every purchase we make, revealing intimate secrets to total strangers. You might say there's nothing wrong with this, and maybe there isn't. Ashkan Sultani demonstrates some software that reveals the third parties watching your every move online. When we visit district.com and we look up, you know, luggage, 12 or so third parties that pop up on the site. So these are just people lurking in the shadows. That's right. These are people that want to know that I'm interested in luggage and monitor me. Did you know Google keeps a record of every search you've ever made? Think about that. Every search you've ever made, saved for posterity. Google really knows the truth because it sees your behavior. So that just like that scene imagined in Minority Report. John Anderton, you could use a Guinness right about now. They can sell stuff to you wherever you go. But e-commerce is just part of it. Text messages, emails, online chats, all supposedly private. Those messages are retrievable by divorce lawyers, employers, and others. One big concern is all those cameras out there. If they're ever combined with facial recognition technology and powerful search algorithms. Right now, you have this sort of false sense, though, that they're not actually looking at you. Once that becomes um, technologically feasible to identify people uh, right away, then I think we are going to be in a world where, you know, if you will never be able to be not found. A brave new world in which every one of us will become a Beyonce or a Jay-Z with nowhere to hide, somebody always watching. For this week, David Wright, ABC News, Los Angeles. And we are joined now by two men who thought a lot about these questions, Baron Soka, the president of Tech Freedom, and Reddit co-founder Alexis Ohanian, author of Without Their Permission. And Alexis, let me begin uh, with you. You say we have to preserve our right to privacy in this brave new world, but is it too late? Well, you know, there are, yes, we are in an age of oversharing with selfies, and, and everyone's got a smartphone on them. Um, but I think a lot of what's, ca what's happened as a result of the revelations of people like Edward Snowden, reporting of Glenn Greenwald, is that we do have a right to privacy when we expect it to be private. Uh, we make the decision to publish certain things. We make the decision to publish other things privately, online or offline. And uh, what's interesting is, you know, I think the European government has the best of intentions with the laws that they're trying to pass. The problem is going to come down to actually executing it. Uh, because this is, you know, the internet is one giant global copying machine. You described this decision by the European Court about this so-called right to be forgotten, which gives people, would give people the right to ask Google or some other search engine to take down links that they find embarrassing. Are you worried about that? I'm very worried about that. As a practical matter, it's going to make it really hard for internet websites uh, like Reddit to keep providing user content. That's why in the U.S. we decided not to do that, to not make sites like Reddit uh, responsible for what their users do. That really has been the basis of the open internet in this country. And so my concern is that there's, there's sort of a false debate here. There are people who say privacy is dead, and that's not true. I don't believe that. But then there are people who say privacy is an absolute fundamental right, and that leads you to crazy decisions like the European one. So the real goal is to figure out in the middle how to deal with real harms, real problems. When the NSA is able to get all of our information, when, when p police can get information about us without going to a judge. How about when companies can track every single thing your kids do online? Oh, same thing. So you can either uh, say that there's an absolute right and try to shut it down, right? That's not going to work. That, that really would start to break the internet. But that doesn't mean there isn't a role for government. There is a role in, in going after real harms, real problems, and making sure, for example, identity theft data security breaches. Those are very serious problems. We should be dealing with those. We should make sure that users do have choices. But we shouldn't think that we can stop technological change. People tried to stop Gmail. They tried to shut it down when it was first started because it creeped them out. 
And technology is always going to be creepy. The camera was very creepy when it first started, and we got used to it. How about this argument, though, let's say on this, on this argument of the right to be forgotten, if, you know, most average people are defined by their worst moments online. If they defaulted on a, a debt at one point 15 years ago, that's the one thing that mm -hmm. comes up. Should there be some kind of statute of limitations? Here is the... The, the challenge becomes, and I alluded to it earlier, the internet is a global copy machine. And the challenge is trying to snuff it out one place is going to create a kind of black market for this information somewhere else. Maybe it's because of geographic location or whatnot. It's, it's, it's a really difficult proposition. This technology enables a lot of stuff, but the problem is, is it's really hard to put that genie back in the bottle. And there are other ways to get around it, right? There are, there are companies in the business of doing reputation management to sort of help you kind of cleanse your search results by promoting other content that's better, the kind of thing you'd want your future employer to see. That, that seems to be a part of a meaningful solution.